Welcome again to Joe Stunner Boxing. <clears throat> Excuse me. A few people have asked what I think about um, the whole Daniel Dubois, AJ bit of handbags they had when they were being interviewed. Um, you know, was it fake? Was it manufactured? Well, it depends in what sense do you mean was it fake? Because I think that AJ was genuinely irate at Daniel for saying, we can do it now, we can do it right here. And then when AJ said, I'll wrap this chair across your head, then Dubois suddenly clicked from chit-chat to real mode. Uh, and he said, you know, you're not intimidated by me. Uh, I, I, you don't intimidate me and so on. That, I, th I think the, the friction was probably real. But I was talking to um, Lee from Inside the Distance Boxing and, and his friend Dean um, about this, about Daniel. And I think Daniel... People are whispering in Daniel's ear, certainly Frank Warren has admitted to doing this, you know, say this to him, do this, appear this way, it'll sell the fight, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and he does it. Now, I've got to be careful what I say here, but I don't mean this disrespectfully in any sense. But Daniel does strike me as someone who might be on the spectrum, shall we say. I could be wrong. I'm not, uh, you know, he's not been diagnosed, I... But he does seem, someone said to me, well, he maybe he's just a bit slow. I don't know what it is. But it's curious because when you see, when you see his father speak, his father speaks very eloquently. And um, <clears throat> whereas Daniel, with Daniel, everything seems a little bit forced, a little bit, um, he's like a shy boy who's suddenly coming out of himself, you know, um, but doesn't quite know how to articulate. He does, he's not the most articulate, articulate of people. But let's just say for the sake of argument that he is on some sort of spectrum. I don't know, Asperger's, autism or any of the other variations of it. The thing about people like that is that one of the things about one of the, the attributes, and it can be a positive for, for people like that, is that they concentrate on one thing intently, intricately, intimately. And if people, people around Daniel, whether it's Frank Warren, um, or any of his training team have been saying, be aggressive, you know, try and be a bit of a gangster. It will come across as being a bit of a gangster. Do you know, say this, do this, behave in this way. If you do that, I mean, Don Charles may have been doing it as well. He's another one. But if, you, if you're on the spectrum, you will concentrate on that. So, okay, I'll be aggressive. It's like against Philip Hergovic. No regard for defence at all. It's almost like he'd been, they'd said to him, be aggressive. Okay, I'll be aggressive. Straight at him. No regard for defence. No balance, in other words. It's all I'm focused purely on being offensive. Be offensive. No defence. Um, that can work. And that, that's that's a pretty good way of, again, I said it can be an attribute if, if you have that characteristic. Because he's been beaten twice, Daniel. But it won't bother him, necessarily bother him, if he's fed the right information, if he's... I suppose the word is manipulated emotionally and mentally, it won't have the same effect that it would on a normal person because people can say, well, okay, you lost twice, but they were learning experiences, weren't they, Daniel? And they'll go, oh, were they? Yeah, they definitely were, mate. Look, look what you learned. You know, don't worry about being defeated. It doesn't matter. Loads of people being defeated. Muhammad Ali lost five times. Mike Tyson lost six times. Ray Robinson lost 19 times. Who cares? And Daniel, Daniel, once the repetition, repetition, repetition kicks in, will think, Oh yeah, doesn't matter. Whereas most people who have that more, that greater ability to balance things emotionally and mentally, would think, well, yeah, but I got beaten and I quit twice. And if you are of a certain neurological mindset, let's put it, let's be all PC and put it that way, that can be an advantage. It can be an advantage, not just in boxing, but in any any walk of life. They call it, nowadays they've got a fancy name for it, which is neurodiversity. It's always existed. Um, and nowadays, everything, I mean, for example, when I was a kid, I suffered from what is now called OCD when I was very young. Um, and I, I had it really bad, but no one knew really what it was, didn't have a name. So they just thought I was a bit peculiar, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know what they thought. I didn't really care what they thought. But uh, nowadays, people do recognize these characteristics. And if you recognize it, you can then turn what could in some respects be seen as a negative into a positive and you can turn something from being potentially destructive into being something potentially constructive 
So regarding this little bump in the heads between Dubois and Joshua, um, Joshua, you know, Joshua's the type of guy who strikes me that he wants to be seen as a little bit of a, the real deal, a bit of a street guy, a bit of a gang. Gangster's an overused word, isn't it? But, you know, he wants that air of being a bit of a killer. Uh, so he wasn't going to let Daniel say anything disrespectful to him. He kept saying to Daniel, don't disrespect me. I take being disrespected very seriously. You know, don't call me out. And, and Daniel, because he he's probably been fed this very aggressive information, this this encouragement to be aggressive, he's going to react in kind, which he did. So was it fake? Not really. But what they're doing with Daniel in sort of grooming him to be more aggressive, more front footed, mentally as well as physically, I suppose it was inevitable that at some point he'd bump into someone who would say, Daniel, don't go there, because if you do, it's going to end badly. Um, but in the ring, I mean, I, I make, I'm make i not going to make an absolute prediction at the moment, but I do make Joshua the favourite. I think Joshua has to start as favourite. But Daniel can hit. Daniel can hit. We know Joshua can hit hard. And we know Daniel can hit hard. It's who lands first. Uh, and I don't normally say this, but it's difficult to see this fight go in the distance, isn't it? Sometimes, you know, two bangers, two sluggers, two front-footed guys will cancel each other out. In this instance, I don't see that happening. I would be very surprised if this went the distance. But what do you think? Comments below, as always. Please subscribe to the channel if you're new. If you like the video, hit the like button as well and help the channel out. Let's try and get ourselves to 5,000 subscribers. Spread the word. Thank you for your time, as always. The weekend's here. Enjoy yourselves. Bye for now.